to our singles department, get it and bring it back into the studio, and we actually managed it within two minutes. What has been the most uh, requested single? Um, I think for Radio 1, it's definitely been Boys of Summer by uh, Don Henley. All right, well, let's play that now. All right, now you catch me on our tour of Radio 1, walking up the stairs. Right in front of me, the lift. I wish I'd have caught the lift now. Uh, behind me is a lot of heavy metal stuff going on. That's where Tommy Vance lives, so we won't go in there. Uh, I'm just going to make my way down here, along the corridor. And on my right is Malcolm Brown's office, uh, the producer of the Adrian Just Show. If, if Adrian's in there, I'm going to move right on, obviously. Uh, Christine Bohr is next on my right. Uh, she is the producer of the DLT Show. And right in front of me is the giant production office, which I'm about to go in, where I'm bound to receive, obviously, a huge round of applause and wild enthusiasm. Hello, girls. Hello, Steve. As you can see, they're delighted to see me. So with me are Lee and Big Julie and Sue. Now, your RPAs, what does that mean, first of all? Radio production assistant. OK, so you give back up to the producers. And what does that entail from day to day? When you get in in the morning, what occurs? Um, well, we have to get all the records ready, pack up the boxes for the DJs, answer the letters, answer the telephones, make the coffee. <laughs> get Basically, the lion's share of the work. <laughs> you actually physically do the work, don't yes. you? Right. Now, as you know from listening to this programme, this is such an exciting building, Egton House. Can I ask all three of you uh, what you think of the Radio 1 building? First of all, you, Sue. Crowded. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> Not much room. Really? Yeah. Small? I think, yeah, I think um, if the listeners came and saw the Radio on Building, they'd be very surprised. Really? Not glamorous. Not glamorous at all. That is true, actually, but I think that's a good thing in some ways. But that's just my opinion. What about yours, Big Julie? Well, it's OK, but what I find very strange is very often you can't get the radio tuned in upstairs. <laughs> and when you call the engineers over, they say, well, it's not a very good building for a radio. <laughs> it's something to do with tin in the walls or something the building's made with. And all you can so, get is uh, other stations. That's, that's right. So sometimes, not often, we have to uh, do just that. that. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, how dare you? <laughs> We've been talking with Lee and Big Julie and Sue, who are RPAs on the third floor. I'm going to make my way somewhere else now. Thank you very much for talking to us. Bye. Bye. Come up here into the senior producer's office now. We're with Paul Williams, who you'll know from the Nicky Campbell Show, and also our own producer from Steve Wright in the afternoon, Mick Vilkoic. Uh, let me ask you, first of all, Paul, what is the job of a Radio 1 producer? Most people listening will, will think, well, I've heard about the producer, but what does he or she actually do? What is that job, Paul? The job is to work with a DJ and to choose the music in conjunction with that DJ in the light of the brief you're given by the management of Radio 1. Now, I know that sounds a bit of a mouthful, but it's really to do a programme and make sure it's good and successful for listeners who we know are listening at that time of day or night. Mick Vilkoc is with us also. Now, I know very much so yes. that how hard you work. Thank you. Uh, now, your duties are something altogether different because on our particular show, Steve Wright in the afternoon, we're also booking guests, etc., right? That's right, yeah. It's much more... It's a larger brief than a straightforward disc jockey show. We we have the guests, we have the uh, the lifestyle stuff we have to chase up, we have Richard to organise with Mikey in the pit, we have the sketches to do, and like I said, the, the guests take a large, inordinate amount of time to organise, because they're always flitting through the country, you have to try and catch them at the right time, edit the tapes down, you know, it just goes on forever. I I'm giving you two a real good time here and making you sound as if you really work hard. I, I have to say that you do, but you do actually work fairly long hours, both of you. What time do you come in and what time do you go home? My day goes from about 8 in the morning to about half 6 at night, and there's no break in the middle. And what about you, Paul? I'm in about sort of 10.30 in the morning with the night show I'm doing, and then I sort of um, around some nights till not home till 1 o'clock in the morning. But that's not every night. What do you think about the general atmosphere at Radio 1? And be honest, tell us about uh, the atmosphere in this building, Egton House. When I first came to Egton House, it reminded me largely of Steptoe's backyard. It's so <laughs> it's small, it's cluttered, but lived in. And, you know, you get the feeling that if you actually lifted, lifted the carpets, there'd be like, <laughs> old disc jockeys and records <laughs> underneath there. And I think it's good, and it, it's been good for the, what, seven years I've been here. I've enjoyed it thoroughly in this building. Are there any disc jockeys that you've worked with over the past, say, well, ten years or so, that you really would rather not work with again? <laughs> 
I wouldn't say that about you, Steve. We had a great time in Northern Ireland. I remember with the road show there. <laughs> I pretended to be asleep in the back of the car so he wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> anyway, thank you both. Continuing our tour of BBC Radio 1, Egton House in particular, Egton House being the home of Radio 1. What we've done now is come out onto the steps outside. We're here with Nick Godwin, who is Director of Promotion at BMG Records, also Michael Payton, who is independent, and Myra McPhee from One Little Indian Records. Okay, you are that plugger. What is a plugger, Nick? A plugger is a person who represents the artists from the record company and is the go-between with the pop station. And we have to make sure that our artists are represented in a proper way. We've just got to get the information across to you and the enthusiasm that we feel for our bands. Tell us some of the hits you've had recently. Uh, Annie Lennox, Diva, and, uh, and one of your favourites, Steve, take that. Yeah. Myra, do you ever find yourself working on a record that you don't actually believe in, but you're so professional, uh, you'll enthuse about it anyway? There's always angles. I mean, whether you like a record or not doesn't mean to say that the next person will or won't, you know. Music's for everybody, and everybody's got individual taste because you specifically get something, you think, oh, I don't really like that. Then eventually, you might come to love it yourself. That's what happens with the public. Maybe hear something the first time, think, don't like that, after four or five listens, think, that is fantastic, they can't stop humming it. So it's really an individual thing. You actually, all three of you, come from a tradition, I suppose, that goes back many, many years, back to the 20s and 30s, when they used to be song pluggers. Well, I think that's true. This is probably before my time, but I remember the old days where, apparently, to get a tune across to a producer or to a radio show, um, the plugger used to go in and actually play the song on a piano right for that particular producer and if he liked it then he'd probably use the the song in a forthcoming show but as i said that's before my time <laughs> <laughs> nick to what lengths do pluggers go to get to producers and disc jockeys absolutely extraordinary lengths one of them that i remember i wasn't there it is a story but it is true is kenny everett was having lunch on a riverboat restaurant and another promotion person was in the same restaurant and he dove over the side of the restaurant boat and popped up by the porthole next to Kenny Everett with his single in his hand, bl bl blubbing, <laughs> trying to plug him. Uh, and that's an absolute true story. And it shows that we have fun doing the job too sometimes. Didn't I hear one about somebody pushing records under a toilet door? Yes, uh, I think that was really taking the job too far. Uh, producer, I don't think they were running away. They were just normal course of the day, went to the, to the toilet and under the toilet door <laughs> slipped a single. <laughs> um, I don't know what it was called, but uh, this could be, could be some guesses. But uh, yeah, they go to extraordinary lengths because we're very passionate about the job we do. Let me ask you, Michael, is there a record that you believed in, you were working on as an independent promoter that you felt, well, it wasn't going to be a hit, but then somebody picked up on it, then it got some more airplay, you did a little bit of work, maybe you brought the artist in or whatever, and then finally it was a hit that made the playlist. Yes, funny enough, there was a record, actually, and it was recommended by a radio station up in Liverpool. And I had a very good friend out there who said to me, every time I play this record, I get thousands of phone calls. Um, so I asked him to send me a copy and track down the record company, eventually, who was releasing the single. And eventually, we had some records manufactured, and I brought it into Radio 1. And I was sitting in my office one day listening to the, the station, and I heard Simon Bates play it. It was actually a single called Star Trekking by The Firm. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually said after he played it he said that record is so bad I'm going to play it again so, so bad it's good yeah. and so sure enough lame. yeah sure enough it was a number one here through to Broadcasting House now uh, we're in a, a sad room I call it a sad room actually it's not sad at all because it's where they hold the weekly playlist committee uh, it's B58, and heading up that committee is Paul Robinson. Now, Paul, what actually happens in here, and when do you do it? We do it on Friday mornings. We have a good time. All the producers and lots of the DJs and myself sit around a table, and we play records, and we play them, and we discuss them. We think, yeah, that sounds all right, and that's great. That's a bit naff. And we think where they may fit into the network sound. We then look at the existing playlist, which is a list of records, basically, records that are played on daytime Radio 1, and decide what's tired, what's had enough. Uh, and what we're going to replace them with. How many records do you 